Section 8.2 is the law of sines. So last section in 8.1, we talked about right triangle trig. Now we're going to talk about how to solve triangles that are not right triangles or what we call oblique triangles. So you have two options. There's either three acute angles or two acute angles and one obtuse angle. These are both considered oblique triangles. So the way that we solve an oblique triangle is we find all the sides and angles. And there's four cases. You have angle side angle or angle angle side. So you either have two angles and the included side, or two angles and then the following side. Or you have angle side side, so an angle and then the two following sides. And then case three is you have two sides and the included angle, so side angle side. Or case four is you know all four, uh, excuse me, all three sides but no angle. In this section, 7.2, we're gonna cover cases one and two. So angle side angle, angle angle side, and angle side side. So like I said, the law of sines is used to solve angle side angle, angle angle side, or angle side side triangles. And if you have a triangle with these label measurements, alpha, beta, and gamma, and A, B, C side lengths across from the corresponding angles, then the law of sines says that the sine of alpha over side A is equivalent to the sine of beta over side B, which is equivalent to the sine of gamma over side C. So we're going to use this information to solve a triangle. Here we have a picture given. If you weren't given a picture, always draw your triangle so you know what information you're given. We are given an angle, angle, side problem, so we know it's going to be law of sines. The first thing I do is write down all my given information. As I go, I'm going to continue to fill out this because that's going to be my answer. I need to know all six of these pieces to have a final answer. So first thing is we have two of the angles, so how are we going to find this third angle? Well, we know all three sides of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, so we know that alpha, angle alpha is going to be 180 degrees minus angles beta and gamma. So plug that in your calculator and you end up that angle alpha is 40 degrees. So now you have as much information you can find right away. I set up my law of sines. So the sine of alpha over A, we don't know, is equal to the sine of beta over B, we don't know, is equal to the sine of gamma over C. So now we have it set up and we can find angle, uh, sides A and B. It doesn't matter which one you start with. I'm just going to start with A and I'm going to take those two ratios and just set them equal to each other. So the sine of 40 degrees over A is equal to the sine of 95 degrees over 5. Cross multiply, you end up with A is equal to 5 sine 40 degrees divided by the sine of 95 degrees. When you plug this in your calculator, make sure you, your calculator is in degree mode and also make sure you close your parenthesis on this 40 degrees. So it should be 5 sine, the parenthesis will automatically show up, 40 degrees, close your parenthesis, and then do your division. So plug it in your calculator, you end up with 3.226 for A. Make sure you're always rounding to three decimal places. This is a side length, so we don't need a degree measurement or anything on it. When you are answering your angles, do make sure you put the degree symbol. So now go ahead and pause the video. Do the same thing, but solve for side length B. So do the same thing. You end up with B is equal to 5 sine 45 degrees divided by the sine of 95 degrees, which is 3.549. When you're doing this, I always use the given angle and the given side um, because that way you're not rounding. If you were to have done it with sine of 40 degrees over 3.226, that's all right, but you're rounding, so then you're going to end up rounding and then rounding again, and your answers are going to be slightly off. So if possible, always use the given exact answers. Here's a second triangle. It's an angle-side-angle problem, so you know it's going to be a law of sines. Go ahead and pause the video and set up your table of your known information, find your missing angle, and set up your law of sines ratios. So we know alpha is 10 degrees and beta is 5 degrees. We're solving, we don't know gamma yet. We don't know a, side A or side B, but we do know side C is 5. So if you use the fact that all three angles have to add up to 180 degrees, you know that gamma is going to be 165 degrees. 
So now if you set up your law of sines, you have sine of 10 degrees over A is equal to sine of 5 degrees over B, which is equal to sine of 165 degrees over 5. So go ahead and pause the video and do the same thing we did in the last example to find side lengths A and B. So I set up my law of sines, and then I use sine of 10 degrees over A is equal to sine 165 degrees over 5 to solve for A, which comes out to be 3.354. And then similarly, sine of 5 degrees over B equals the sine of 165 degrees over 5. And so solve for B, you end up with 1.683. The important thing to remember is to always go back to your sin law of sines ratio and keep in mind the given information. So here's a word problem that is going to use the law of sines. We have a bridge over a gorge. We know the bridge is 880 feet long, and we know that the angle down to some point in the river, one angle is 69.2 degrees, and the other angle is 65.5 degrees, and we want to find the height above the river. We can't assume that this point in the river splits this bridge in half, but we can assume that this is a right angle. So eventually we are going to use right triangle trig, but before we do that, because we can't assume that both of these sides are 440 feet, we have to find one of these sides here using the law of sines. So here's our given information. This is what we know. We can find angle gamma. We know all three sides of the triangle have to add up, all three angles of the triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So we can find gamma by subtracting alpha and beta from 180 degrees. And we find that gamma is 45.3 degrees. So now we can set up our law of sines. Go ahead and pause the video and set up the law of sines with this given information. So setting up the law of sines, we want to find one of the sides. We don't need both A and B because we're going to do a right triangle. We just need one of these sides. So go ahead and pause the video and find either side A or side B. So using law of sines, I solve for both of them, just in case whatever side you side solve for, but you only had to solve for one. A was 1,157.353 feet, and B was 1,126.570 feet. So now if we use side A, you could have also set it up with the opposite other triangle, but if you we use this right triangle over here, this right right triangle, you have a right triangle, we don't know its height, we know this angle in here is 65.5 degrees, and we just found this side length, 1,157.353 degrees. So now we have right triangle trig. Go ahead and pause the video and find the height using right triangle trig. So using right triangle trig, Sokotoa, I said that the sine of 65 degrees is the opposite, which is H, over the hypotenuse, which is the 1,157.535, or 353 and then multiplied it out and ended up with the height of the bridge is 1,053.146 feet. So law of sines we've talked about so far with angle side angle and angle angle side triangles. In the next video, we're going to talk about what happens when you have angle side side triangles with law of sines.